You have the in and out ports right here. You can have them up at 12 o'clock going like that. This spindle will come in contact with the bolt head. Like we talked about, there's one command mark on the steering box and two on the pitman arm. What's uh, up dudes? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be starting a new mini series on building the steering for the 92F1 build. This steering has been a weak link on this truck ever since we've had it done and in every video you've seen us driving it we've been complaining about the steering. Right now with the 39 inch tires and the stock Chevy pump with the stock Ford box, under 10 miles an hour especially on the street this truck is basically impossible to steer. You have to use all the force you can just to get it to turn. So with the system that we're gonna be installing, you should be able to turn the truck with just one finger. I'm happy to say that we're gonna be working really closely with how performance throughout this whole process. The owner, Jeff, has a ton of experience. He's been in this business forever. So he can give us the know-how and the knowledge to translate that to you guys so you guys can get something out of this and learn how to do it yourselves. This first video is gonna go through the basics of how one of these power steering systems work. And we're also gonna go through some important things to start with such as steering stops, mounting the ram assist, and marking the box to send to Hal to get it built correctly. I have some stuff laid out on the table here, so we'll just jump into it and get started with this build. All of the diagrams you're gonna see in this video series are off of Hal's website itself. You can go over to the FAQ section and pull up all these to reference. So I'll go over this first one real quick. We have a P-pump on this truck, and we're gonna be running a steering box with ram assist. So this is the correct diagram that we're gonna be using. We aren't going to have a hydro boost, so you can see I cancel that out right here. And instead, the line from the pump is going to go directly to the power steering box. But in this diagram, you can see some of the essentials of what we're dealing with. So you have the ram right here coming in and out of the steering box. And then from there, you're going to run a line with an inline cooler to the reservoir mounted up high. And then that's going to come down to the power steering pump. Jeff refers to this as the heart of the system. This is what you want to protect right here. This is your highest priority. And then from there, like I was saying, it's going to go directly back into the box. So that's kind of the essentials of the system. We'll be refer referencing this in the future some more. And then this over here, we'll get to later in the video. That's the proper marking of the steering box for internal stops. So you're going to mark up the box because when he's going to build it, he's going to put stops in there. So ideally, everything in the system is going to be stopping at the same time. That means you're going to be hitting the steering stops. The box will be hitting internal stops and the ram is gonna be hitting the end of its stroke. So everything's gonna stop at the same time, that way you're not getting any more pressure to bend and make stuff break. This is our ram from Hal. It's uh, two inches in diameter and it has a four and a half inch stroke, meaning that this can go four and a half inches out. And this is what we're gonna be using on the steering setup. Over here, I have some templates made that I've designed on SolidWorks. If you guys are wondering how I did this and transferred it to paper, you can check out the door panel build for the bug and I go through how to do this very in depth. But this is what I've come up with for mounting this ram. We'll go into some basics on how I design these right now. This is the steering setup that we have on this truck. It's a dual swinger setup, which means you have a swinger here and a swinger on the other side. So essentially how the system works is you have a steering box with a pitman arm coming off of it. You have a tie rod going to one swinger, a tie rod coming down to one spindle right here. And then also from that back swinger, you have another tie rod going to the second swinger. And from there, you have a tie rod going down to the other side to that spindle. There's a few things that you can do to this system to quicken your steering or slow your steering. And that all has to do with your pitman arm, your swinger lengths and the pivot points on that. And then also the pivot points on the spindles itself. So you can lengthen or shorten these distances to manipulate how the steering system works. For example, on this spindle right here, you have an upper and a lower pivot. So that's where the spindle is turning on. That's the axis of rotation. And then you also have an arm coming out that the tie rod mounts to. If you think about it, if you lengthen this arm, this tie rod's gonna have to move more to turn the tire. And then if you bring this arm in closer, the less movement in the tie rod is gonna be required to turn the tire. This same system of thought can be applied to the swingers and their lengths and pivot points as well. And all this is gonna have a role in how your steering system works and it's gonna be essential to where you're gonna mount your ram and what stroke ram you're gonna need. The way our steering system is packaged, we're gonna be running the ram off the bottom of the frame right here and connecting to this first tie rod from the pitman arm to the first swinger. That's just how everything's packaged. That's the only place we could stuff it in. If you think about how this system's gonna be working, the end result that you want is the tires to be moving, 
which means that you want these swingers to be moving. And mounting it here, removing that swinger about in the middle over there, as you can see. And if you were to go lower, it'd be overall easier on the steering system. Because if you think about how torque works, think about if you have a, a really tiny ratchet and you're trying to twist and get something loose. Whereas if you have a long arm ratchet, it takes way less work to do that. So if you mount lower on the swinger, it's gonna be a lot easier on the system. But the way we have everything laid out, this is our only option and that should work just fine. I measured how much this tie rod's gonna be moving and it's about three inches. So we're gonna have to limit the stroke of the ram, which is no big deal. We can do that internally and we'll go through that at a later time. It's also important to note that you may not even be able to use a four and a half inch stroke ram depending on how your system works. It just comes out that this moves three inches for us, but on your system it could move more or less. So you have to figure out how your geometry works on your system before you pick a RAM to use. Once you've decided where you're gonna mount your RAM, you have to really put some thought into how you're gonna mount it, and there's a few factors that you really need to take into account before making some mounts. Since we're gonna be mounting the RAM off the tie rod, we wanna get the RAM as in line with this tie rod as we possibly can. That's gonna make it so we have to use the most minimum force possible to get this tie rod to move. The ram's gonna be putting out an X, Y, and Z component of force. So in this case, the X would be going this way, the Y would be coming down and up, and the Z would be going in and out. So let's say if we have the ram mounted at an angle pointed up, there's gonna be a Y component going in, and that's gonna reduce the X component that's gonna be pushing this tie rod. And it's also gonna be increasing the amount of force that's gonna be going into potentially bending this tie rod. So you wanna have it in line there, and also going in the Z direction, let's say in or out like this. If you're pointing in at the tie rod, again, it's gonna be putting force into the tie rod to potentially bend it, and it's gonna be reducing the force into moving the tie rod. If that didn't make complete sense to you guys, I'll break it down into its simplest form and just tell you the benefits of mounting the ram in line with whatever you're mounting it on. The easier that'll be on the steering system, the ram, the whole system, the less work it's gonna have to do in the end. And it's also gonna be a lot easier on your steering components such as your tie rod swingers and everything because you're not putting in any force to potentially damage the system. Now that you know how to mount the ram, there's another important factor that you need to consider and that's how you're gonna clock the ram. What do I mean by that? So you have it mounted off the frame into the tie rod or the swinger or however you do it. You have the in and out ports right here. You can have them up at 12 o'clock going like that. You can have them off to the side like that or all the way down. You wanna have these completely vertical, pointed straight up. The reason for that is kinda of how fluid works. In this system, in the oil that's gonna be in here, there's inevitably gonna be some air in there. So let's say you're running the system, you turn it off, you get some air bubbles trapped in here. Well, since the density between the oil and the air is different, the air is gonna to wanna to rise. So since you have the ports at the top, the air is gonna escape out and vent out of the system. But if you have this mounted upside down, where's the air going? It's getting stuck in the ram at the top and it's not gonna leave the system. So that's why you wanna have the ports pointed directly up at 12 o'clock. Here's the mount that we've been making throughout this video. You can see it still has that L notch in it. And the issue I ran into with this one is that it wouldn't fit to the frame nicely. The frame has more of a kick out in it than I thought it would. So when you hold this straight to, to be in line with the tie rod, there's such a big gap here that no amount of trimming would have fixed that. So I put some pieces of ram board on here and just laid it over the top and taped it on and notched it correctly so I knew the pattern that the plates had to be. And I transfer that over to some new pieces and cut them out and had Christian weld this up. You can see he did a really nice job welding these up. Everything came out really nicely. But you can see how much more material is right here to sit level on the frame. So that's what we had to end up doing is remake it completely. Here's the one that goes on the tie rod itself. Christian again did a really good job welding this up. So these pieces are gonna be put on hold for a little while, but now we can move to getting the steering stop set and getting the box marked. We're currently at the front of the truck. This is the driver's side beam that we're looking at. We also have our King 3.5 inch IBP up here as well. And looking at the back side of the beam, you can see our current steering stop setup. 
We have a tab coming off the beam with a bolt and two nuts on it to keep it in place. And right now the truck's at full lock to the right, but as it comes around to the left, this spindle will come in contact with the bolt head and it'll stop the spindle from rotating anymore. This bolt setup seems pretty common and I've seen it on a lot of off-road trucks. The one downside you're getting, or at least we're getting in this current setup, is only one side of the truck is stopping the steering. So right now, the truck's at full lock to the right. Nothing on this side is stopping that, it's just the other side and the bolt set up over there. So to improve on this, you'd add some sort of steering stop on the front of the beam as well. And that way both sides are stopping the steering from going anymore. That's something that Jeff Howe recommended to us and something that we'll most likely be adding in the future. One thing you need to keep in mind is the clearance to the radius arm at full lock. Right now, we're about three and a half inches away from the radius arm, so we have more than enough clearance. You wouldn't want these touching at full lock because of tire deflection, you're really going to be digging into that radius arm. So leave yourself at least, I'd say a half inch to an inch away from that radius arm just to account for tire deflection. So far this video, we've covered in depth on how to mount your steering ram correctly. And we've also covered how to set up your steering stops. Now we're going to move into arguably one of the most critical steps throughout this whole steering process which is going to be marking the box for internal stops. Referencing back to another diagram off of Howe's website, you can see we have properly marking the steering box for internal stops. This can be found under the FAQ section as well. At the top there's some general reminders, you know, have your steering alignment set, have the box centered internally before you start doing any of this. And you can see there's a three-step process that Jeff Howe has listed here for us to do on the truck. Step one's gonna be take your truck and go to full lock. That's where we're gonna want the internal stops, so that's where we're gonna set it to mark it. You're now gonna take a scribe and mark on the box what they call a command mark. And then since you're at full lock, you're gonna take a scribe and also mark in line with that mark on the pitman arm. That way he knows where the truck's at full lock to one side. Step two, you're gonna go to full lock the other way. And again, do a mark on the pitman arm, not on the box. And then step three, you need to remove this box because you're gonna have him build it. Now important, this first thing, do not remove the pitman arm from the steering box. As soon as you do that and you pull the pitman arm off the box, now you don't know where lock is anymore, so he's not gonna be able to set up your box. So leave that pitman arm on the steering box when you pull it. That way there's no issues down the line when he's setting up the internal stops. The most important part of this is how you're marking it. You're gonna wanna go ahead and use a scribe. Sharpie is a no. The reason you don't want to use something like this is because the mark has a certain width to it and that can throw your internal stops off by a few degrees. Now you put the box back on the truck and something's off by a few degrees. You have to reset your steering stops. If you have a ram on there, you're going to have to remake the mounts. So don't do that. Take a scribe, something that's very precise and mark it with that. So that probably seems simple enough. The reason I say this is a critical step in the steering process is because if you do it sloppy and mark the box wrong, Something may be off and you'll have to get the box redone and you don't want to do that. So just use the precise tools and get it done right the first time. I spent some time marking up the box and then Krishna and I pulled it off the truck. So let's see what we're working with. Just have it out on the bench so you can easily tell what's going on. Here's our pitman arm right here. This is usually raw or rusty since it's been sitting for so long. And you can see I've put some black paint on the back part. The reason I did that is so you can easily see our scribe marks that we made. Usually you'd use something like Dicum to do this, but with everything going on with coronavirus, I couldn't get any for a few weeks. So I just ended up using some black paint and that worked really well. Like we talked about, there's one command mark on the steering box and two on the pitman arm. And you can see how small of a distance is in between these two. So if you had this off by even like a 16th of an inch, that could translate to like 10 degrees in the steering. So just be very precise with this and take your time to do it and this should turn out perfect. Another thing I wanna mention is where the column connects to the steering box on these splines. You're gonna to wanna to mark these two to match up your column back to the steering box once you get this back. So we have a white line and then an indent that we made and that lines up with the column so we know where to put this exactly to get the steering back to how it was. So you just wanna mark it or have some reference on how you're gonna do that. And I've also gone ahead and put some caps on here so no fluids coming out while we're driving around and bringing this to Howe. Uh, so that'll just make things easier. This is ready to go off to how and it's done with us for now until we get it back. One other thing that I want to mention is you don't want to rely completely on the steering box to stop your steering. You want to have some physical stops on the steering like we showed. That way you're not putting a bunch of pressure on this box and potentially messing it up. And you have this and some bolts or however you're going to be stopping the steering to stop it. 
and it'll disperse the load evenly and nothing's gonna be breaking. So I just thought I'd bring that up in case you were wondering if you could rely completely on the box. It's probably not a good idea. You're just gonna be putting a lot of force into it. But that's pretty much gonna wrap up this video. I'm getting this ready to take to Howe right now. So they're gonna go into it and completely start building it. Also got some new Wings World merch. Head over to the website. I'll put a comment down below. You guys can pick up some new merch. It just came out at 10 a.m. this morning. But if you guys like this video and you learned something, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It helps the channel grow and helps us do more projects. So just do that if you could, and we'll see you in the next one.